Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'll show you how to integrate the Reincaptor iOS SDK with Cocoa Pods into your app in order to finish the user onboarding process started in your website. If you haven't checked out the onboarding web video yet, just please do so now since we'll be using the same keys that we created before. There's a handy link to it in the comment section of the video if you are interested. Oh yeah, and you'll also need to have Cocoa Pods installed on your machine. If you don't, just run sudo gem install Cocoa Pods and that'll take care of it. All right, let's start by opening up Xcode and creating a brand new project. Let's do file, new, project. If you already have an existing project, you can open it and skip this step. Just go straight to the pod file section of this video. Uh, for the example, we're gonna use single view application. Click on next. Put the name of the app. This is gonna be my app. Pretty original, isn't it? Everything else looks fine to me, but you can edit it accordingly to your settings. Click on next. Yep, desktop's fine. Always make sure to get your projects. Create. All right, we got it all up. So now we're gonna create a pod file in the root folder. Over here, just click, right click, new file. You'll wanna choose empty file. Click on next and name it pod file with capital P, pod file, capital P and check these targets since there are no need to bundle this file. Hit on create. Okay, now we just need to add the dependency to Reincapta in the pod file. So just type in pod Reincapta. Save the file and now we can close this project since, you know, Cocoapos will be creating a new one. Let's bring the terminal app now, terminal, uh, cd into desktop my app and run pod install. So what's happening now is that CocoaPod is downloading and installing the latest version of the library into a new workspace. Um, so in this case, as you can see, it's downloading version 1.7. This is the current last one that we have right now. Remember to always use this new workspace that CocoaPods will uh, create uh, because this is going to have the dependency to all your other uh, projects. Okay, so let, let's now open the newly created pro uh, workspace. It's looking at over here, my app. There it is, double click. All right, lovely. Um, now open the storyboard on your, your left, my app, main storyboard. And let's add a button to start Reincaptor. We'll place it in the middle of the view. So let's look it up here, button, put it in the middle. Let's add some constraints so that it keeps in the middle regardless of the device. All right. In this case, we'll use a phone number to identify a user, so we'll use it for the login, but it can also be used for in several other places of your app, like password recovery, or signing up without a password, or sharing the application, or inviting new friends via phone number, or even for two-factor authentication purposes. There are many different use cases for these, but for now, let's just stick with login. Good, save it, let's Bring up the double view, tool view here. And what we're gonna do now is hook the touchdown event to a new created action. So there we go, touchdown. And let's hook to this action. Good. Let's save this file. Let's get rid of these dual view now. Good. So first we need to import now the ring capture header file from the library. So just put import ring capture good uh, second we just need to make a call to the library to start ring capture with the app key and secret query that we created for our morning app so i'm going to go here just put ring capture very far on board and yeah so if you don't remember your keys like me now just copy them from your ring capture panel luckily i am already there just copy your app key and paste it right here. Same thing for the secret key. Copy and paste it. Good. Okay, we're gonna present the widget on top of this view controller so that when the widget exits, it keeps the user on this view and not another one. So for that, we're gonna put self here. So it go, comes back here. We're not going to use delegates, just to send nil. Now we're going to use the basic success cancel blocks for now. Uh, we're going to log these to the console. All right, 
let's cancel now. Cancel. All right. That's good. Great. So it looks like everything's ready to give it a try. Um, let's just build this for now and run it. Bill failed. Okay. Oh yeah. There we go. I had to fix this. Good. Let's build it. Yeah, now it's fixed. All right, let's just run this on our simulator. Uh, which should come up. Yep, there you go. Good. So the app is running now. Let's try to log in. Oh, great. The widget is up, as you can see. Uh, it's regarding a phone number since we haven't started the onboarding process from the website. But should that be the case, the widget would only require the PIN code to finish it and not the phone number. As you can see, we can navigate the widget normally, choose the country or even put in uh, the number and continue with the process. So that's it. We now have an onboarding widget on our website and an iOS app. So it's time to focus on the cool features now. In the next video tutorial, I'll show you how to integrate the Android SDK just like we did here in iOS. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Chuck Norris approved.